Rise and shine, it's nine o'clock. Good morning and welcome to LJ News. On a bright and sunny day in Moldova's capital, Chisinau, there are a few signs a war is raging just a couple of hours' drive over the border in Ukraine. Student Angelina Bodishin and her friends take a late side walk, sipping takeaway coffees and watching rowers out the water. However, the invasion is on everyone's minds. We don't know what the future holds for us, Angelina said. We never would have thought war would break out in Ukraine. However, pressure from Russia is nothing new. Moscow has had troops stationed in Moldova for more than 30 years. While there's been relative peace ever since, the war in Ukraine threatens to rain night tensions. On Saturday, Ukraine warned Russian troops in Transnistria were mobilizing to prepare for potential hostilities. Ukraine has warned that Russia may use the breakaway region to stage an attack on Odessa, including as part of an amphibious assault. The self-proclaimed government in Transnistria has denied troops are readying for battle, and the Moldovan government says there are no signs of a mobilization. While Moldova has long demanded Russia withdraw troops from the separatist region, the country's minister for internal affairs, Anna Revenko, downplayed the chances of Transnistria being used to stage an attack. So far, the analysis points to a hypothetical threat, she told the ABC. I would like to talk in facts. Despite condemning Russia's invasion and welcoming hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian refugees, Moldova wants to stay neutral and hasn't imposed sanctions on Moscow. We have no interest being involved in wars or military actions of either of the countries, Ms. Ravenko said. Moldova is in well placed to withstand pressure from Moscow. It gets almost all its gas from Russia, which has previously threatened to switch off the supply. Ms. Ravenko said the government was fully aware of the vulnerabilities that Moldova is in, including the energy sector. We're not hiding it. We are looking for alternative solutions, she added. Luckily for Moldova, many of those solutions are coming from Europe. The bloc is funding renewable energy initiatives, including a biomass project to heat homes and businesses using agricultural waste. Professor Grigor Marion, who leads one project at the State Art Ag Agrarian University of Moldova, said renewables offered the country a pathway to energy independence. The resources and energy attained from Russia are not secure and always have political conditions attached, he said. In the days after Russia's invasion, Moldova joined Ukraine and Georgia in formally applying for European Union membership. Prime Minister Maya Sandu declared that EU member status would create a better, safer life for future generations. However, the process could take many years and a bloc may still reject Moldova, especially if the dispute over Transnistria can't be resolved. Russia has played hardball with Moldova on more than just gas, having repeatedly disrupted the country's wine industry too. Wine is one of the country's most important sectors, and 20 years ago, Moldova sold the vast majority of its wine to Russian buyers. In recent years, however, Moscow has introduced intermittent bans on Moldovan imports. While it said the decision was due to impurities found in the wine, it was widely seen as a punishment for Moldova's diplomatic decisions, including seeking closer links with Europe. Yet Russia's attempts to influence Moldova have at least partially backfired. Instead of leaving supplies in Moldova isolated, the bans caused the interest to pursue much stronger ties with Europe. Inside Chetavatli, one of Moldova's leading wineries, wine production continues without disruption despite Russia's bans. It was simply a matter of finding a new market for Moldovan wine, 
according to Andrian Degolian. Our winery started to look for other countries, he said. They didn't put all their eggs in one basket. Wine supplies have also been aided by an EU agreement that gives Moldova improved access to the European single market.